We're in a bit of a hurry up and wait mode this week when it comes to space weather. As we take a look at our Earth facing disk, we have been getting some fast solar wind from this irregularly shaped coronal hole. Some people say this pole looks a little bit like the back end of a bunny. I can kind of see that. Here's the cottontail, right? And you got maybe an ear here and an ear right there. <laughs> These kinds of things are going to end up being more common over the next maybe six months or so as these coronal holes end up kind of being confined to this mid-latitude region. The reason for that is because you can actually see all these closed field regions in here. This is part of the uh, heliospheric current sheet, and it's kind of confining these coronal holes to be in this mid-latitude region where we've got what I call the mid-latitude shredder, where all of these active regions kind of pop up and they pop up in the middle of these structures. Plus, we're getting kind of this peeling off of the coronal hole off in these directions this way, both away, from, you know, up toward the poles like that along that symmetry axis. This kind of uh, activity is completely normal for this part of the declining phase of the solar cycle. So expect to see more of this. This one might even survive its far side passage and we'll see it again here in about a month. Meanwhile, as we take a look at the active regions, the ones on the front side of the disk are pretty quiet. We really haven't been getting any big flares, but the ones on the far side that are about to rotate back into Earth view, well, those are another story, and we'll talk about them a little while later. Meanwhile, we've also got a really gorgeous filament structure right here. This thing has been bobbing and weaving in the high altitudes here in the solar corona for quite some time. It's really jailed hard by all of this closed field, though, here in this streamer belt region, so it's going to continue to be kind of leaking off a little bit, even with the big far side eruptions that we'll focus on here in just a sec so you can see it more clearly. It's really a beautiful structure. In fact, as we switch to our uh, our more of our, our 304 angstrom sun, which gives you a lot more, a better view of the material coming off, you can actually see a kind of dim those field lines down. You can really see how high it's sticking off of the solar uh, surface. This is about seven Earths off the solar surface. It's like a big skyscraper right now. And back on the 25th, when there was a big eruption, it actually bobbed and weaved. You'll see it right here in this close-up. Watch one of the big eruptions occur. Boom, right there. Now look at this structure. Boing, boing, boing. <laughs> so it, it gives you a decent sense that this structure, even though it's unstable, it's really having to try to pop through a lot of closed field that is really kind of jailing it. So we will likely continue to see it leaking off instead of being one of those big, beautiful filament eruptions. And sadly, once it finally does erupt, it probably isn't going to be Earth direct. It may go too far north of us. However, we don't have to worry about solar storms because we are going to get some. As you notice, there was some stuff on the far side. You'll even see a big eruption here. Watch it here in just a second, late on the 25th. You'll see that, boom, that was a massive eruption. That is from good old region 4274, which is going to be rotating back into Earth view. You can see that it is actually busy, along with another one. You can actually see another one at the end of the 26th. You'll see yet another eruption. I don't think it's from the same region. It's one of the other regions that's coming. Let's see, it's right here. It's very dim. Boom, right there. You can see something on the far side that way. So we've got multiple eruptions that are big storm producers. They're likely big flare producers as well. They're both in the south and in the north, and we'll talk more about those in just a second as we get into that full sun map. But meanwhile, enjoy the fast wind from the bunny coronal hole, and uh, perhaps you might get a little bit of aurora from it. Now, switching to our full sun map, we do not have a solar orbiter or stereo data right this second to be able to fill out our full sun map, so we've only got two sources. We've got the SDO AIA imagery that's here in red. That's all the sun's front side. That's what we're looking at right now. Uh, from Earth. And then we've got our JSOC Helio Seismology Farsighted Viewer that's giving us a sounding of the sun from the far side. And just to give you a kind of an idea of where we are, you can see region 4286 and 4287. These regions haven't been all that active. That bunny coronal hole, you can kind of see it a little bit in this region here. That's the cotton tail of the bunny. So it gives you an idea of where we are in the front side. But let's take a look at the far side for a second, because if you remember old friend 4274 that gave us that near G5 solar storm, really was almost a G5. If the G5 averaging had been a slightly different, the, the big uh, indice averaging had been different, we would have actually seen a level G5 solar storm. 
but it didn't quite make it, just grazed the hairy edge of it. So it was still officially a G4, and uh, Region 4274 just kept firing off these big solar storms one after the other, and it looks like it is not done. So this region, along with 4272 and 4281, as well as some other regions in here that we'll look at in just a second, those are the regions that we're paying attention to. Those are the regions that have been firing off big solar storms on the far side and likely big flares as well. So they are going to be rotating here into Earth view over the next couple days. And the interesting thing about this is that when we take a look at our orbit disk here, you can see here's Earth, here's Stereo A, and here is Mars on the Sun's far side, right? So it, if there's a somebody who might be looking, I don't know, like maybe Perseverance rover, taking a look at the sun's far side, it might actually be able to see sunspots if they're big. And in fact, as we do that, you'll see here, I'll step way off on this side, you'll end up seeing, look how close they are getting. Notice, before I pull it up, notice you've got 4274, you've got 4275 and 4281, as well as some regions in here that look like they're darkening. And this pattern here is super critical because when we pull up the Mars Perseverance rover, this was back on the 24th, it saw three soft spots right there. Do you see that? So this set here is region 4281. Take a look at how large this set of structures are. So it's pretty smeared out like that. We still have region 4274 as well as 4272, some cluster in there. And then we've got something in the middle, 4275. Interesting, right? But watch the next day as well. Look, now that looks like there might be one more. We've got a couple hot pixels because remember, this is mast Z. This is the, the uh, left mast cam that is looking up from Perseverance, Perseverance Roar right through the Mars atmosphere. So it's a little bit hard to see the high resolution, but it looks like this region is continuing to develop. If I back up again, actually, I think if I play it forward, it'll it'll show it, it'll redo it. There you go. So see, you don't you see a little bit of something there, but not too much. But the next day, it becomes a lot more visible. So definitely these are these are big enough regions to be seen as far away as Mars orbit. And so expect these regions as we go move into the next few days, expect to start seeing that solar flare uh, intensity pick up, the solar flux intensity pick up. We have risk for radio blackouts coming back again. You're going to see that risk for not just R1 and R2, but R3 level radio blackouts guaranteed as these regions rotate into view. And we might even have more than we bargained for because it's not just that one region that we're going to be dealing with. And now switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are dealing with that fast solar wind from that irregularly shaped coronal hole. And that brings us at high latitude. It's going to bring us some decent aurora. It already has been, and it's going to continue over the next couple days. So at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting major storm conditions with up to, in fact, about a 70% chance of major storm conditions. Probably won't reach a severe level, but this is going to kind of be off and on all the way through possibly Sunday. So your Thanksgiving weekend, if you have to be in the states you should get some decent aurora uh, so happy thanksgiving i hope you're grateful uh, as i will be and uh enjoy it because things are going to calm down just a little bit as we move into monday but again we've got those big uh, regions rotating into earth view so high latitudes i imagine you're going to get some bigger chances for bigger storming here pretty soon now mid latitudes well we're only expecting active conditions and it's likely only going to last through about saturday before things really begin to calm down again just looking at Aurora, Aurora Watch. So if you're a dedicated chaser and you like chasing substorms, game is on. But if you're someone who's more casual, it may be better just to celebrate at home with family this weekend and enjoy looking at some of the Aurora pictures you got from the big G almost G5 storm that we had just a little while ago. And now as we switch to our solar flare and dayside radio out, uh, blackout outlook over the coming week, we are sitting at about 120 to 125 right now for solar flux. Expect that to ramp up as we move in through the weekend. And that is because of big players that are rotating back into Earth view. We have minor noise on the bands right now, only expecting about a 15% chance of M-class flares at the R1 to R2 level radio blackout. But again, those are going to change by Monday of next week, we could see a 40% chance of R1 to R2 level radio blackouts and about a 10% chance of R3 level radio blackouts. So expect that the conditions to change, expect the noise on the bands to rise 
and expect to kind of hunker down as we move into next week. And now radiation storm and polar aviation outlook. Well, everything is in the green this week. We are sitting at the D well, one normal range for you uh, aviators at flight level 360. It's also the S0 quiet range for everyone else. But again, that could change very, very quickly as these regions uh, rotate into Earth view. They did give us lots of radiation storms. So expect this forecast as we move into uh, Monday of next week to change pretty dramatically dramatically. And if you're a frequent flyer, be sure to watch those at ICAO advisories and pay attention because uh, expect those big radio blackouts to cause you some issues, especially near dawn and near dusk. So the space weather this week is a bit of hurry up and wait. If you're an Aurora photographer, you're in luck. We do have that Peter Cottontail coronal hole that's rotating through the Earth strike zone and sending us that fast solar wind. So at high latitudes, you're definitely getting shows and that will continue over the next few days. If you're at mid latitudes, though, only if you're dedicated and you can chase substorms should you bother. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, you know, right now things are quiet, but it's the calm before the storm because you've got the big regions that are going to be rotating back into Earth view. So expect that noise floor on the dayside radio bands to start rising in and around the weekend and expect the risk for radio blackouts to go way up into next week. You're probably going to have to hunker down. So get those contacts while you can. And now you GPS users, well, you know, we've got a little bit of storming on the night side, but the day side is pretty good for at least the next couple days. So as long as you stay away from dawn and dusk and you stay vigilant anywhere near Aurora, your GPS should be pretty good.